Hi my dear students, welcome to Unacademy. Welcome to Daksha Engineer Junction where you learn the, the concepts well in a very easy manner, in detailed manner and these concepts are very much helpful for the any competitive exams like GATE, ESC, ISRO, DRDO and State Government GENCO, TRANSCO and Central Government SSJ. And here we are ready to help you in all this in this particular concepts all the technical concepts we are ready to help you and if you need any particular topic and do comment in the comment section we are ready to help you in those concepts fine let's continue our discussion and today's topic is stability analysis stability this is the one of the most important topic in the signals and systems and control systems also and see this thing here stability what is when the stability here the system whatever the system we have designed and we need to take care of that the system must be stable and let us consider this is my LTA system and having the impulse response is HRT this is LTA system I want to analyze the nature of this system we need to analyze it whether this system this box is stable or not we need to analyze analyze for this we are going to into see the different cases we are going to see now so if we know HRT well and good we can with the help of the HRT we can analyze if we don't know HRT let us consider X of T is my input and Y of T is the output by using the from if I know the input and output relations we can able to analyze the nature of a system okay without knowing the HRT from the X of T to V of T we will analyze the nature of the system right see here as we know y of t which is given us h of t h of t convolution with x of t now h of t where this x of t is what you tell me now input and H of T which is belongs to the system that is called as an impulse response that is what you tell me impulse response now here what we are going to do here you know so generally we are going to analyze the nature of the system with the help of H of T if we don't know the H of T from the using the input output relations we can able to analyze let us see this thing how we can able to analyze the stability of the systems in the different ways here we are going to see that the, there are six different ways we can do the analysis of a system stability the first one is if I know only input output relations if I don't know any impulse response or transfer function then we can do by using the input output relations second one if I know the impulse response we can do and with the help of the poles and with the help of the ROC with the help of the transfer function for the discrete case and ROC of which object shall we let's see this thing first one with the help of the input output relations here basically as we have seen the output of the system y of t which is given as h of t convolution with x of t here where this x of t is a input signal and which will maintain this x of t is a bounded so this x of t which we take it as a bounded signal means that is a finite signal bounded signal finite signal stable signal we can see this thing. if this is stable signal then 
and we are going to see this thing here whether this y of t is stable or not bounded or not if for in case of a x of t is bounded if the y of t is also bounded then i can say that this h of t is bounded that means system is bounded nature so this type of stability which we can call this as a bebo stable that is if for in case of a bounded input if the output is stable then we can call this as a bebo stable now let's see how we need to analyze it let's take some examples where y of t is given as a 10 into x of t first of all here you need to see this thing this is my x of t given and this is what you tell me now here input and this is my output right now we will apply a bounded input we apply bounded input means what you tell me now here the value of my x of t must be stable we need to apply the bounded input we apply the bounded input means let us consider this x of t the value which is is a value that is something the value it is bounded value bx and where this bx is less than infinity bx value is a finite consider where bx is a finite now you see this thing if you have taken this as a mod on both sides then see what i will get now here mod of y of t which is equal to mod of 10 into x of t right now so what i will get now this is 10 into mod of x of t that is magnitude so then so you tell me now here the magnitude of y of t which is given as 10 into the maximum value the maximum value of x of t is what we can say now here less than bx maximum value we can take it as a maximum of bx now you see this thing this is a finite value isn't it now 10 into finite is a finite only now so from this what i can say this value i can say this is a finite i can say now tell me from this i can say finite so that means what i can conclude you tell me now here the given system is stable given system is bebo stable given system is bebo stable next now let us see the next one here x square here also we can take this as for the bounded input input must be bounded which we have taken as something bx value and that bx value less than infinity now if i take this mod on both sides magnitude we have consider here so this is what it is now here that is mod of bx square now here the square of the finite value so which will give us a finite value only now this is a finite value square of the finite value finite only so that means i can say my system is bebo stable the system is bebo stable next you tell me now here in this cases now here we have taken the bounded value of x of t which is less than bx and which is less than infinity now you tell me now here what is the value of mod y of t here which is given as mod t into mod of x of t now if we see carefully this is the magnitude of y of t which is given as into mod x of t here this magnitude which is equal to bx and here we need to we can change the the time parameter from where to where minus infinite to plus infinite minus infinite to plus infinite 
minus infinite to plus infinite we can change so when I ch change here t is from minus infinite to plus infinite if I change the t value from minus infinite to plus infinite what happened to this y of t here then you see this thing here the magnitude of y of t so when the t tending to infinity so this y of t value tend to inf infinity now here when t tends to infinity y of t tending to infinity here x of t we have taken bounded so because of this input is bounded but because of this t at the time tends to t tends to infinity this value become infinite so that's why what i can say now this is the given system is unstable it is not bebo stable input is bounded but it is not stable right and if you see carefully ln of x of t now you see i can change the different values bounded values for x of t now as you might know the nature of this log function log function if i take that t no this here we have taken this as x of t i have taken and this is ln of x of t now this nature is yes, log 1 when x of t is equal to 1 so it is touches to 0 log 1 and so this value which is like this this is the log 1 and if you see carefully what is the value of log of log 0 it is minus infinity here at this location x of t is how much you tell me which is equal to 1 so at this location so here x of t how much you tell me now which is equal to just 0 plus i can consider now you see this thing here when when if x of t x of t which is equal to 0 plus what happened to y of t you tell me which is ln of 0 plus ln of x of t so this value which is equal to minus infinite here this input x of t is a bounded only input is finite value but y of t we are getting infinite now so what i can say the system is unstable the system is unstable next one here you see carefully in this case y of t is equal to cos of x of t as we know here this is cos theta the range of cos theta which is from minus 1 to plus 1 range of cos theta is always from minus 1 to plus 1 that means if we take any value of x of t any value of x of t the output that is y of t should be always like this only now i can write now here so this is cos of x of t this lies only from minus 1 to plus 1 that means range of here minus 1 less than y of t we can pay r equal to also less than r equal to 1 the value of y of t which is always less lies between minus 1 to plus 1 for any values of t so from this what I can say in this case the system is stable isn't it like this manner we will analyze the stability of a system if they given input output relations now let's see the next thing here when the impulse response is given impulse response means what you tell me now here h of t when h of t is called as an impulse response of the system now let us see this thing here how we can do here if the given impulse response of the system is given 
yes if integral from minus infinite to plus infinite h of t into dt if it is a finite value if it is less than infinity then i can say system is stable then i can say system is stable stable system this is for continuous case the same thing we can do for the discrete case also and for discrete case what we can do here and for the discrete case sigma n is from minus infinite to plus infinite that is mod of h of n this value must be finite mod of h of n this value must be finite then i can say the system is stable Okay, all of you tell me discrete case and continuous case. Let us see some examples here. Look at or check whether the system is stable or not. Here they given what they given. We don't know input output relations. We know impulse response and it is a continuous now here. So what is the condition for the continuous impulse response must be stable when h of t into dt. That must be a in less than infinity means we should get that is a finite value. <clears throat> now tell me now here, I can do this thing integral. We have u of t is there. Limits are zero to infinite only now. H of t is e power minus four t into dt. Now you tell me now here, e power minus four t by minus four limits. Zero to infinity. <clears throat> so that is minus one by four into when I subtract the upper limit e power minus infinite minus e power zero. So what I will get you tell me now here minus one by four into which is zero minus one. So which is equal to plus one by four. And this is a finite value. Now tell me. This is a finite value, so then I can say the system is stable system. <clears throat> Since it is finite value, we can say it is a stable system. Now let us take the next problem. H of t is given as e power four t. Now here also integral from minus infinite to plus infinite. Impulse response only given here also. This must be. We need to get finite value. We need to get. Let us check this thing whether it is a stable or not. And integral, I can say zero to infinity. I can say zero to infinity and e power forty into dt. E power forty into dt, which is given as what I will get. E power forty by four, and the limits zero to infinity. Now subtract out the limits. Now that is one by four into uh, that is e power infinite minus e power zero. Now you see this thing. What I will get now here one by four into e power infinite is a infinite minus one. So this means which we are getting this as a infinite now here. So this is impulse response is infinite. So that's why the system is unstable. All of you. So, if they given impulse response, we need to analyze the analyze like this. Next, now here this is a discrete case is given. <coughs> now let us see in this case how we can analyze it now. <coughs> discrete case. H of n is given. So that is summation. Sigma n is from minus infinite to plus infinite. That is mod of h of n must be a finite. It is less than infinite infinity. This must be a finite value. This is a condition for the stability. Right? Yeah. Here also we have a mod. Okay. This magnitude is same. Will come now. This is a mod. Not for t. 
this mod is up to here okay like that yeah now you tell me now here in this case mm -hmm. so here we have u of n is this so the limits i can say n is from 0 to infinity and 1 by 2 whole power n now when n is equal to 0 which will get it as 1 and this is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 2 cube like this will come which is given as it is geometry series now here the infinite geometry series mod r is less than 1 so what i can say now here a by 1 minus r so which will get this as a 2 so and this is a finite value now tell me which is a finite so that means what i can say here then stable system so i can call the system is stable fine in this manner we'll analyze if impulse response are known now let us see if they are given the poles of a systems are given <coughs> in this case if the poles of a systems are given now the condition is now this condition here and this is my s plane and this here is a real part of s and this is imaginary part of s this is the origin and here which is this is called as a left of s plane this is called as a left of s plane and this is called as a right of s plane right of s plane simply we will call this as a left of s plane wish to call lh plane wish to call and this is called as a rh plane rs rh s plane right of s plane and here this is a real axis this is a real axis and this is a imaginary axis j omega axis or we can call this as a imaginary axis j omega axis or we can call it as a imaginary axis right now if all the poles of the system means transfer function if it lies only in the left of s plane if all the poles are lies in the left of s plane then i can say system is stable if all the poles all the poles of the transfer function h of s lies lies on the left half s plane then the system is then the system is stable here all the poles must be lie on the left side only so in this region only has to lie in the left of s plane then only the it is a stable okay even the pole should not lie on imaginary axis. If the poles lies on imaginary axis, then the nature it will come to the marginally stable. If the poles lie, lies on the right of S plane, the system is unstable. Unstable. Okay. Now let's see this thing here. And take this problem here. They given the impulse response. Laplace transform is given h of s which is given as 1 by I can convert the partial fractions which is equal to s plus 2 into s plus 3 now you see tell me the poles of the system 
equals which is equal to s is equal to minus 2 and s is equal to minus 3 these are the two poles which we have right and this is a real part of s and this is an imaginary part of s and you can tell me now here the poles s is equal to minus 2 means here we have a pole now s is equal to minus 2 here and s is equal to minus 3 here we have another pole so where we lies the two poles now here the two poles are in the left of s plane only now here yes we don't have any pole on the right of s plane or the imaginary axis so that's why what i consider nature of a system is a stable system next now you see this thing h of s what they given if i do factorizations you can see now here this is s minus 3 into s plus 2 isn't it these are the roots now now you see the poles of the system here so one is at s is equal to minus 2 the other one is at s is equal to plus 3 now this is my real part of s and this is imaginary part of s and so this is called as here this is my left of s plane and this is right of s plane and this is a imaginary axis or j omega axis you see where we have poles you tell me now here so the one pole which is at s is equal to minus 2 one pole is here now s is equal to minus 2 i can say other pole is at s is equal to 3 here we have another pole so we have this pole is one pole in the right of s plane the right of s plane pole will make the system is unstable so what i can say the nature of a system which is an unstable system fine now let us see the next one another way of analysis if the roc of a system is given so what we can do if the roc of a system is given roc means region of convergence so then what the condition for stability is if the roc roc of h of s h of s includes includes j omega axis j omega axis means what imaginary axis include j omega axis then the system is stable then the system is stable if the roc include the j omega axis then only the system is stable if the roc does not include the j omega axis then the system is unstable then the system is unstable okay now let us see some examples yes sir now see in this problem here they given they given the h of s h of s which is given us you tell me look at now here the roots are s minus 3 into s plus 2 these are the roots now here and you can see the poles now here we have a two poles one is at s is equal to minus 2 the other one is at s is equal to 3 okay now look at this thing here first of all i want to see one by one carefully first case now here a yes so first of all you locate the poles now here i am locating the poles hold on small ones 
so that all the three are in this heel only okay you get now this is my yes plane here what are the poles here is there one pole is at s is equal to minus two here this is s is equal to minus two here we have one pole the other pole is at s is equal to three the other pole is s is equal to three isn't it all of you tell me first thing right here we have the poles are like this next now you see carefully now here what is the ROC of a system is given so here which is equal to ROC real part of S this is the real part we should take now here the real part this is on X axis we will take the real part of S this is a ROC real part of S is what you tell me now greater than 3 means how this ROC you see carefully so means from here to here so this thing will draw a line how this ROC here tell me greater than 3 means right side or left side which is right side now like this greater than 3 which is right side like this this is a ROC of a system isn't it <coughs> this is a ROC This is the ROC. Now you see this thing here. What is the condition for stability now here? ROC must include the J omega axis. And here this is the J omega axis. Now this is the J omega axis, isn't it? Is the ROC in is include the J omega axis? No. ROC does not include the J omega axis. So what I can say the nature of the system is unstable. Since ROC does not include the G omega axis, so the system is unstable. <coughs> now you tell me the second case now here. Now in this case, second case, see what's going to happen here. Here they given this ROC. ROC which is given as less than minus 2. Tell me here what happening. And this is a real part. And this is a imaginary part. This is the imaginary axis. This axis which is called as a J omega axis j omega axis now you see carefully now here what happens now first look at the poles here we have one pole is at s is equal to s is equal to minus 2 the other pole is at s is equal to 3 right now you tell me in this case what's going to happen so this roc is less than minus 2 tell me the roc is less than minus 2 so means left side or right side you tell me left side so which is like this now here this is my roc left of smaller than minus 2 means like this now left side right this is a roc now in this case is the roc include the j omega axis roc in this case also roc does not include the j omega axis so what I can say the nature of a system now tell me unstable nature the nature of a system is what I can say unstable nature now let's see the next case now here now third case ROC lies between minus 2 to this is sorry this make it as plus 3 not minus 3 do correct it plus 3 Okay, in this case, let's see this thing here. Now, in this case, minus 2 less than real part of S less than 3. So, in this case, how we have? 
here we have the poles this is my real part of s and this is imaginary part of s here tell me the location of the poles one pole is at s is equal to minus 2 the other pole is at s is equal to 3 and now you tell me here where is the ROC is given lies between these two means ROC which is like this you tell me which is more than minus 2 less than plus 3 means this is ROC now tell me this is a ROC you can see carefully this is a ROC of a system given this is a ROC now you see this thing is the ROC include the imaginary axis now yes so that's why the system is stable so that's why the system is stable in this manner we'll analyze it now fine now let's see the another way here so Laplace transform that is for the continuous cases for the discrete case we'll go for the Z transform H of Z you see here when the poles of H of Z is given so in case of a Laplace transforms so here J omega axis J omega axis we need to do in case of a Z transform we have a unit circle is required means here what is the condition here if all the poles all the poles of H of Z lies inside the inside the unit circle the unit circuit then the system is stable then the system is stable so in the jet plane here which is called as a real and this is a imaginary axis here we need one circle that is unit circle is required this thing if I call this is a unit circle now all the poles must lie inside the unit circle all the poles of a system must lie inside this inside this unit circle then only the system is stable right now let's see some problems take this thing here now this given h of z or x of z is given tell me now x of z which is given as 1 by z plus 2 into z plus 1 now you can see the poles of the system here one is at z is equal to minus 2 the other one is at z is equal to minus 1 now so you can do simply what we can say here mod z you can do mod z how much here tell me 2 and this is mod z which is equal to 1 right Now you will see this thing carefully. <coughs> now this is a real part, real axis, and this is an imaginary axis. Now you see this thing, I have drawn this is my unit circle. This is a unit circle. So here this magnitude, so this here at this location how much is mod z value which is equal to 1 now you see this thing here mod z is 2 that means this pole is outside the outside now here you see this thing this is which is outside if the pole is outside the unit circle then what I can say the nature of if any one pole lies outside then it is 
unstable only all of you tell me so then the system we can call this as a unstable system right next in this case now here also we can see now here this is mod z value which will get this as a 2 by seeing itself we can able to identify a mod z which is equal to 3 and so what is the condition now here for stability now here all the poles must be lie inside the unit circle so you see this thing here this is the unit circle both these poles are lies outside the unit circle or not so then the system is unstable okay done so this is a way now let's see the another one here last one if the ROC is given if the ROC is given so let's see how we can able to analyze now if the ROC is given then what we can do here if ROC of the transfer function h of z include the includes the unit circle include the unit circle then the system is stable if not unstable ROC include the J omega sorry previously J omega axis now it is unit circuit now check in this case here and here also we have a poles here they given the poles of the system here you can see one is at so that is Z is equal to 2 and Z is equal to 0.8 no effect of zeros fine now take the first case now here first case here this ROC which is given as a greater than 2 check in this case now here this is a real part and here this is a imaginary part locate the so I have taken this is my unit circuit. This is my unit circuit. <coughs> now you see carefully. So what they given now here at this locations. What are the poles are there here? You see this thing. One pole is at Z is equal to 2. One pole is at Z is equal to 2. The other pole is at Z is equal to 0.8. This is the 0.8 here. Isn't it? Yeah. Right. Now you see this thing here. What they given the ROC is a mod Z greater than 2. So with this, I am drawing one more circle here. Now, what they given this ROC is a greater than or less than here they given. ROC which is given as what now here greater than is given that means outside here like this now. Now, this is this ROC include the J omega axis or not. This is the ROC. Is the ROC include the J omega axis? No here in place of j omega axis here we have a unit circle not a j omega axis sorry unit circle here roc does not include the unit circle this red circle is a unit circle that's this you know it does not include a unit circle so that means what i can say the nature of the system is now here tell me unstable all of you next now if you see the second case now here what they given now here this mod z which is less than 0.8 now you tell me in this case what happened 
now we have a force now one is at point 8 so here this is a circle for z is equal to point 8 and this is a circle for mod z which is equal to what 2 right now we have the unit circle this is a unit circle this is what unit circle you see this thing what they given now roc here the roc given less than 0.8 means less than 0.8 this is a roc tell me this is a roc roc now you see whether the roc include the unit circle or not here in this case also ROC is not include the inner circle so that's why I can say the system is unstable next and the C case what they given the ROC 0.8 less than mod Z less than 2 is given now you tell me in this case whether this ROC include the JO sorry unit circular or not now we have a poles one pole is at this is a circle for z is equal to so here this is for z is equal to mod z is equal to 0.8 and this is a circle for mod z which is equal to 2 Now I need a unit circle and this is a unit circle. Now see this thing what they given the ROC here which lies between 0.8 to 2. So here 0.8 to 2 means where the region you tell me here 0.8 to 2 like this now here this is the region of ROC this is the region of ROC isn't it now you can see now in this case is my ROC include my unit circular not yes ROC is inside so here the unit circle is inside my ROC ROC is included the unit circle so that's why in this case the system is stable in this case we can say for this particular ROC the system is stable now you see this thing these are the different ways for the analysis of a stability of a system you can see with the input output relations impulse response poles and ROC and discrete as well as continuous manner Hope all of you like the session. All of you do like, share and comment in the comment session if you need any other specific topic. Let's meet in the next topic. See you. Bye-bye.